Hi, Rafu. It's Thursday, so it's Penny here with you on Can You Survive 100 Days with Bunny Berry Challenge, Day 10. Bunny thought it was Day 10 yesterday. She got confused. We, we get that way sometimes, especially because I've been helping her put this magazine together over the last couple weeks. Well, it's been longer than that, but we get a little scrambled, especially Bunny, because she and Basil have been staying up, I, I think, most nights doing their work. It's quiet. Phone's not ringing, so it's a good time for them to do it. But anyway, um, yesterday's video, Bunny got me kind of going on, you know, if, if you've watched any of my videos or if you followed my blog at, at all, um, I, I am not shy to talk about what I consider to be a really important part of weight loss and health, and that is proper detoxification through a lot of different things, but the subject matter this week has seemed to fall onto the colon, and today is the last day that we're going to really hit this subject, so I wanted to answer a question that came in yesterday. If you haven't watched Bunny's video from yesterday, you'll want to stop right now, go back and watch her video, because this is sort of um, in response to what she said, in response to what one of our Raw Food members said. And I'm just going to read you what Sue's, or it could be Susie, but it looks like Sue's had to say on yesterday's thread. She says, I'm confused. If coffee is not good to drink and raw foodists askew it, I think I, I think I pronounced that right. I don't use that word. That's an excellent word, by the way. That means they are frightened by coffee drinking. How can it be good to introduce it into your colon? I'm not trying to be a smart aleck or anything. I just don't understand how coffee can be bad going down the throat but it will be great when it's introduced up the poop chute. I can understand that probiotics will help populate the colon with healthy flora. I can agree that pure water would have a rinsing effect, but a boiled, highly caffeinated beverage made from roasted beans? Really? She wrote really. Well, um, that's a, that is like totally an excellent question, and I have had the same question myself. So... <coughs> Many of you know that I have suffered from irritable bowel syndrome pretty much since my earliest memory. And so colon issues have always kind of been in the forefront for me because of constipation or diarrhea. I mean, it's really um, altered my lifestyle at different years. And um, so I've studied a ton on the colon and what should you do, what shouldn't you do. And um, as a lot of you, again, know, Coffee enemas and colon hydrotherapy, I feel like, have played a very vital role in my healing, personally. Um, I pulled up uh, some information on the Internet that I'm just going to read to you because I could tell it to you in my own words, but I might stumble around a bit. So I just want to talk to you about um, the caffeine and what's called palmates. There, it's, a, it's a chemical agent that's not added to, but it, it's naturally occurring in coffee, they work synergistically, synergistically to stimulate and cleanse the liver and the blood. Without entering the digestive tract, the caffeine is absorbed through the bowel wall via your blood vessels, and it makes its way directly into your liver. The caffeine exposure causes the liver's portal vein and the bile ducts to expand, which increases the release of diluted tonic bile. The enema fluid triggers peristalsis, which is that feeling that you get when you know it's time to, you know, poop, um, that contraction that you get in your colon, and the efficient removal of waste from the body. Now, the uh, palmitates, I think is how you pronounce it, in the coffee stimulate and increase the production of a liver enzyme called gobbledygook. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. But I will post the link to, this is Mike Adams, Site Natural News, who I think he's a very reputable guy, and he got this information from someone even more reputable than himself on this subject. So I'm going to put the link down here so you can go back and read it. But anyway, the gobbledygook removes free radicals and cancer cells from the bloodstream and facilitates detoxification of your liver. As a result of the enema, the liver becomes less congested with debris, which makes room for the filtering process of yet more bodily toxins. Ideally, the coffee enema should be retained for 12 to 15 minutes, during which time the body's blood supply circulates and passes through the liver approximately five times during that 15 minutes. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never been able to hold it 15 minutes, and I don't know. Maybe it's just my 
thing, but I know Bunny can hold it for 15 minutes, so go, girl. Um, your, your blood supply circulates through your liver for a cleansing process every three minutes. All the blood in your bloodstream. So since the blood serum is then detoxified as it flows through the, caffein, the caffeinated liver, which is basically like um, dialysis in, in a sense, it's filtering your blood through that. The enemy, the enema essentially is a form of blood dialysis, I just said that, across the colon wall. Drinking coffee has no such therapeutic effect, and in fact, it's counterproductive. When you drink coffee, that is absorbed all through your digestive tract, and, and it goes in, and your body does something totally different with it, and it stays in your body. And it also can trigger a bowel movement a lot of people. That's why a lot of people, my husband included, can't get his day started unless he's had a cup or two of coffee because it gives that um, cleansing reaction, but it is v much more um, harmful taken in orally because of all of the different things that happen in the digestive process. Um, and what I've noticed just in my own personal experience is when I drink caffeinated beverages, my breasts become extremely tender. Um, I have a tendency towards fibrocystic disease in my breasts. When I drink coffee, it like immediately within a couple of days, my breasts become tender. Well, when I stick it up the poop chute, I don't have any breast tenderness. I don't get jittery. Um, if I drink right now, if I were to drink a cup of coffee, I would be bouncing off of the walls. So I can honestly tell you that it has a different sort of effect when it is doing what it's supposed to do up the bone hole. Now, let me tell you. If you feel like this is a crock and that you're not into it and you think this sounds wrong, then just don't, I mean, don't, don't do it, you know. I think you have to do what works for you. I personally think that people who have had an alcohol situation, have taken a lot of prescription drugs, who are working in a toxic environment, like I used to work in a hair salon for 15 years, and I was surrounded by all kinds of chemicals. People like us really need that extra boost that um, – coffee enemas can give the liver because sometimes an alkalinizing raw food diet is helpful, but it's not enough to push you to that next level. So I hope what we've talked about today has been helpful to you. If you have any thoughts, pros or cons on this, I would love to hear about your thoughts on it. Hopefully I haven't offended anybody by my frank discussion of colon cleansing, but everybody needs to know about it. So uh, again, I hope your day 10 is fabulous and don't forget to eat your veggies. Bye.